Our next module of interest is the resistance module. This is a tool to help us predict the power and uh, resistance of the vessel and also to help predict the wake that might be generated by the vessel. It uses two different approaches. The first is a range of regression analysis methods. So these are methods that are based on tank testing and they can be used for different types of vessels. So we have a range of different techniques uh, for planing vessels, for general displacement vessels, for shorter squatter vessels like trawlers and tugs, higher speed vessels and uh, also um, techniques for yachts. If we're dealing with slender vessels, we also have an analytical method. This is a potential flow CFD panel method, and that can be used to predict resistance and also for calculating the wake that might be generated by a vessel and uh, calculate the free surface wave pattern. So let's take a look of, at resistance in action. We start the resistance program, and as before, we load our design model directly from the 3D NURB surface model. There's no need for an intermediate table of offsets or anything, and we choose which surfaces in the model that we want to measure in order to carry out our calculations based on the underwater shape. So based on that measuring, we can see the uh, sections that define the underwater shape of the vessel, and in the window below we can see the measured key values that are measured from that underwater shape. So the waterline length, the wetted area and so on, the half angle of entrance, that define the uh, properties of the underwater shape that are then used for the resistance calculations. If we want to change any of these values, we can override those values while we're working. Next, we choose the range of uh, methods that we want to use. So if we want to take a look at a couple of different displacement vessels and uh, techniques at least, compare them, we can choose the methods and the resistance curves will be calculated automatically. So here we can compare the resistance that at different speeds that are calculated by the different methods. Notice also the color coding in the data input window. This gives us an idea of whether the method is applicable and whether the actual model dimensions are within the range of applicability of that particular method. If we want to use the slender body method, we can go to the methods dialog and uh, choose that option. So we can turn on our option to use the slender body and then we go through a series of calculations to solve the resistance uh, analysis for that particular immersed shape. This gives us the resistance at different speeds and you can see the shape of the resistance curve due to the trough of the vessel bow wave moving down the hull. We can also calculate the free surface of the uh, model. So this is uh, calculating the free surface waves that will be generated by the model as it passes through the water. And that will just take uh, a little minute to calculate. So that calculation is now finished and we can see the free surface that's been calculated. So let's just maximize our window and turn on our rendering. And if we rotate that around, we can see the free surface field. Now I've deliberately exaggerated the size of the waves here by about 50% in the vertical direction, just to make it a little bit easier for you to see the generated wave train. This method can be used for monohulls and it can also be used for catamaran hulls and it will take into account the interference between the waves generated by the two different hulls of a catamaran. As I mentioned, uh, of course, we get our resistance curves and our resistance data as well. So MaxSurf resistance is a handy tool for, particularly for doing comparative studies between two alternative designs to uh, verify resistance and power requirements.